Howdy folks, thanks for joining me today. Today we have a gauntlet review on a knife that really needs very little introduction. It's called the LT Wright Bushcrafter. This design has been around for years under various names. This knife is a little bit different. This is a, his budget Bushcrafter. So let's get into the specs real quick, then I'll tell you what's on the docket for today with this knife. Again, this is the LT Wright Bushcrafter. Overall length is eight and a quarter inches. The sharpened edge is three and five eighths inches. This is 1075 high carbon steel. We'll talk more about that in a minute. The grind is convex. The handle is natural micarta, and it does come with a two-step patina. As you can see, it's got brass and steel pins and a lanyard hole. Overall, guys, this is one of my all-time favorite bushcraft style uh, designs. Um, it's very similar to like a Genesis or something like that. It is just this this design is born to work with wood. It is born to craft with wood. Um, so I'm I'm very happy to be doing this review today. It also does come with your classic LT Wright style sheath, which does fit the knife very well and has at least when it's new excellent retention. So. Without further ado, let's talk about what's on the docket today for this review. Like I said just a minute ago, this is a classic design that is well tested and well proven. However, this one is unique in that it is made from 1075 high carbon steel and it is 3 seconds of an inch wide or thick. So today what I want to do is kind of focus on those two aspects of this blade. I'm going to fix myself some breakfast because I'm hungry. However, I'm going to break down this stick of a pig nut hickory and make breakfast with it. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my firebox stove this morning, which its burn chamber is about yay big. So you have to size the pieces of wood to fit basically. So I'm gonna baton it down and I'm also gonna do some cross grain batoning on the hickory to see how well the edge holds up, see how well the, the blade holds up overall. And then we'll just go from there, fix breakfast and uh, see how she performs. So anyway, let's get to work. Going straight through pieces that thick. This is uh, pretty impressive, gentlemen. Well guys, here's my pile. I'm sure some of that's gonna be cut out, but uh, that should be more than enough to make breakfast. Thus far, guys, there's been, I can tell the edge isn't quite as hair popping sharp as it started out. However, it's holding up decently well considering the abuse I'm putting it through. Um, there's absolutely no nicks or dings to the blade whatsoever. It's holding up really well. So 
let's uh, make some breakfast because I don't know about you guys, but I'm starving. make ham, egg, and tomato wrap. Well, it is not hair popping sharp. It's cutting this tomato okay. You have to kind of work to get through the skin. But, these are homegrown tomatoes. And as most know, homegrown tomatoes come with some pretty thick skin. Alright, well that's finishing up. Let's fix the rest of our wrap here. I love these things. Well guys, the conclusion I've come to is that 1075 high carbon steel is a lot more impressive than I ever gave it credit for. Now, I'm pretty experienced with LT Wright blades. I've used five in the past, I believe, anywhere from D2, A2, and O1, and the heat treat has always been spot on. I mean, the knives are extremely strong. LT's knocked this one out of the park too, as far as the heat treat goes. Um, the edge retention on this thing, I wouldn't put it in the same ballpark as the steels I just mentioned. But it's pretty close. Um, after all that, it's not hair popping sharp, but it will grab a hair. You can feel it grabbing it as it goes along. And it does take a few, whether it rips it out or not, it doesn't matter. But uh, as you guys saw, it did struggle with that tomato skin a little bit, but again, that was a homegrown tomato. And as we, most of us know, homegrown tomatoes have really thick skins. So my conclusion, um, you know, I dig this handle a lot. Um, honestly, I figured that I would not like this cutout for, finger but I actually do it's really comfy I thought the handle was going to be too short because um, my hand does hang over just a little bit but it's actually not it's quite comfortable um, the thin steel really allows for it to uh, even with that convex edge bite really deep um, and it's still it shines as far as feather sticking and stuff like that because of that convex edge um, honestly it splits surprisingly well given its thickness so overall I'm really impressed um, the uh, two-stage patina on it, um, I did let the tomato juices or whatever kind of uh, sit on the blade, and it did not show any signs of corroding at all, so the patina is doing its job. Um, guys, I can't think of one negative thing to say about this, um, which, <laughs> yeah, um, I, can always come, I can always come up with a critique, but honestly, on this one, I really can't. Uh, the price tag is extremely affordable. Um, at the time this is filmed, the price tag on this blade right here, I believe, is $75 without a sheath. With a sheath, I think it is $105 or $115. But, guys, don't hold me to that. The prices are subject to change, I'm sure. So, if it's something different, please don't get upset. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for joining me. This has been a lot of fun to film, as usual. And if you guys have found this review helpful or just enjoyed the video, would you please go ahead and hit that like button for me? It does actually help me out quite a bit. If you want to keep track of what my side of the gauntlet or what are the projects I have coming down the pipeline, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And guys, as usual, I will see you next time. Have a great one. Man. Nothing beats breakfast in the woods, guys. Mm-hmm.